Okay. Superintendent Darren Pilkey, Officer in Charge, Traffic Services Branch with SAPOL. Uh, the October long weekend sees the start of a busy period on South Australian roads, uh, with the days being longer, uh, daylight saving commencing and the warmer weather we tend to see and expect to see an increase in traffic on South Australian roads um, each month going through the season from now. Um, in response to that, SAPOL are launching Operation Safe Long Weekend this weekend to target the fatal five causes of fatalities and serious injuries on our roads. And those are things like dangerous driving, distraction, speeding, drink and drug driving, and not wearing your seat belts. We will be statewide through this October long weekend. We'll be anywhere, anytime, making sure that we're across those offences that cause the most trauma on our roads. So you will expect to see uh, RBT sites like the ones that you see behind me today randomly through the state through this weekend. Last October, uh, last October long weekend, uh, we lost one life and there were six serious injuries. Well, I'd like to be able to stand up here in a week's time and say that that's one life too many and that we don't want any of those numbers to reach past zero for this long weekend. In addition to that, we are also running Operation Stop Drink Drug Drive, which will focus on people who choose to drink and drive and make that choice to do that. We know it's the AFL Grand Final this weekend. We want people to have a good time. We're not saying that you shouldn't have a good time, but we want you to have a plan B. We want you not to drink drive. We know that drink driving accounts for a significant number of road trauma and fatalities on our roads. So please, don't drink drive this weekend. Again, we'll be out in force operating a, strunk, a stop drink drug drive operation. This weekend also sees the commencement of Operation Safe Hills. Operation Safe Hills is an annual operation that's run through the Adelaide Hills and the, some of the foothill suburbs of the Barossa Valley and the Hills Flurio. We target this area through this time because we know that there's an increase in traffic through the Adelaide Hills in the summertime, particularly by motorcyclists. Um, and we want to reduce the number of lives lost and the road behaviour in those hills and the environs. So this weekend is Operation Long Weekend, Stop Drink Drug Drive, and for a six month period, the commencement of Operation Safe Hills. Thank you, Alice, for the last week. Can you just talk about the impact that these failures have on the family? Yes, it's unfortunate we've had, um, we've had a bad week um, on South Australian roads this week with, a, with as you say, three lives lost, but, and also a number of serious injuries in the last week as well. Um, it goes without saying that uh, Fatalities and serious injuries cause no end of grief and trauma and sadness to those that are involved. It has long lasting effects on those people who have received serious injuries. They have life changing moments um, that they'll live with, with forever. Um, and the people who lose their loved ones, uh, the grief can go on for years. So um, really, we just ask all people who are using the roads this weekend and every weekend to make good choices about how they drive, not to take risks, so that they don't put their families through that grief and that trauma, and they don't change their lives with serious injuries that they might get. Darren, how frustrating has this year been? 87 people lost on South Australian roads. How frustrating is it for police that the numbers are so far ahead of the previous years? Yeah, it's, look, I've, I've stood up here before and said how frustrating it is. It's, it's, it's sad. It's sad for the people involved. It's sad for the families. It's frustrating for us that the message isn't getting through to people to treat the roads with respect, to drive responsibly, to adopt the right road user behaviour and attitudes. And it's disappointing. It's disappointing that we have to even talk about this particular number. So it's, it's kind of frustrating on a, on a number of fronts. Um, and every road user can can play a part in reducing that frustration, sadness and disappointment. Well, it's, it's hard to say. There's a, num there's a number of factors. Um, it, look, it's hard to pinpoint, and it, like I said, it, fr it frustrates Saypol, but really, we just, it really relies on a change of behaviour of drivers. It's a, it relies on a change of attitude. It relies on people being patient, responsible with other people. We all, we all use the road. We all need to uh, look after ourselves on the road. 
Um, so at the end of the day, it's hard to pinpoint one particular reason why. There's a whole range of factors in it, and every road user can play a part in bringing this number down. Operation Safe Hills, what exactly will police be doing to keep road cars in the Operation Safe Hills, we, we, know we, we know there's a lot of motorcyclists that use the hills um, in the summer months. Uh, people like to get their motorbikes out, they've been put away for the winter and they, they like to go for a ride through the hills and, and feel free of that freedom that, that motorbike riding gives you. But we'll be targeting speeding, dangerous road use behaviour, and that's things like crossing onto the incorrect side of the road when you take corners, taking corners too fast, speeding through townships within the Adelaide Hills. I mean, it doesn't just affect motorcyclists, it affects the other people that are on the road as well, um, where they confront potentially a motorcyclist coming onto the wrong side of the road and, and what trauma that can cause. Motorcyclists are a focus, but it's all road users in the Adelaide Hills as well that we'll be, we'll be focusing on over that period. Do you have uh, any uh, numbers to how successful the Operation Safe Hills was last year? I don't have any numbers, I don't actually have any numbers to hand, um, but we we do know that we have an impact in there and it's uh, it's an enforcement and it's an education process. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to um, fine or expiate our way out of uh, the lives lost in serious injury situation we have. So we have a balance between enforcement and education in safety, in operation safety and all the operations that, that we run. How does this drug and alcohol testing ban behind you work? You blow over um, on an argument so the officers you see me behind me on the random breath testing site um, have a screening device that they screen drivers with. That screening device indicates that they may have uh, alcohol in their system over a certain certain amount. Uh, that driver will be taken to uh, the rear of the van where there's another instrument that will analyse uh, more scientifically and more accurately the amount of um, alcohol in someone's blood. And if you test over, is that you're not getting back in the car? Well, it, it depends on uh, what your reading is. It can be everything from an expiation notice where you'll lose a significant amount of money and a significant amount of demerit points, uh, to having your car impounded, to instantly losing your licence, all being sent to court, uh, potentially to face jail time, depending if you've been a repeat offender or not. But in any case, you're instantly taking the driver off the road who can go on to cause a fatal crash within the court very much so, and we know that drink and drug driving accounts for well over 20% or almost a quarter of the fatal uh, crashes and, and serious injuries on our roads. So uh, we won't hesitate to take people off the road who put themselves and other road users in, in any jeopardy at all. Double demerit points uh, we don't have in South Australia, and it has been spoken about in the past. But we want people to drive safely all the time, every time during the year, not just long weekends, not just during holiday periods. Um, so while uh, double demerit points may have uh, a deterrence effect, we don't want to sugar it in terms of driver behaviour. We want driver behaviour and attitudes to change across the year. Uh, so while uh, we're comfortable with uh, where we sit in terms of the, the fines and the penalties that can apply to people. And people can avoid these very easily by just doing the right thing on the road. Are there Yeah, very much so. And as I said earlier, this is a statewide operation. It's not just metropolitan based. You can expect to see police uh, on the highways, um, on the way to Melbourne if they're off for the footy grand final, and all through the state for the entire period of this weekend. Darren, overnight uh, we saw a uh, motorcyclist come off near, uh, near Parkside. Um, there, there are some different reports that their speed may have been a factor through some of these back streets. Um, it's just another example of the work that needs to go into policing. Yeah, and, and it's been a bad week, as you know, for, for motorcycle deaths and serious injuries. Um, we just need to get motorcyclists in particular this week just to hear the message to change their attitude they need to understand what the consequences of the risks that they are taking by the way that they're, they're, they're using the road um, in particular motorcyclists but it's also up to other drivers too to be aware of motorcyclists um, on the road share that road in a responsible responsible way but like I said people just have to understand 
if they want to take risks, if they choose to take risks, what the devastating consequences of those risks can be. Um, another uh, incident that happened earlier this morning, a, a gentleman had his car stolen after leaving the keys in the ignition to go get a bind me earlier this morning. Fortunately, his son, uh, you know, an adult son, was uh, in the back and had an altercation with the man who stole the car and they crashed into a pole and the offender ran off. But is there a message from police uh, about this type, of, uh, this type of incident? Yeah, look, you don't have to turn your back for long um, if you've left your keys in the car or you've left your car unattended. Really the message from us is always turn your vehicle off, lock your vehicle, take your keys with you. Uh, is the best way to get uh, avoid getting your car stolen. And it's also to be aware of your surroundings and, and who's around you at any given time. And just really take um, some uh, extra responsibility about securing your property. And, and I'm sure that uh, we can actually make those types of incidents stop. How lucky is the, uh, the, the young man in the back of the car, obviously going through an altercation with a, 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 a bandit who's trying to the car. Yeah, look, look I, I don't know too many details about the matter. I know that there was someone else in, in the vehicle. Um, yeah, but extremely lucky because uh, we're now talking about two people in a vehicle who are not concentrating on what they're doing on the road. Um, fortunately, for, for both of the people in that vehicle, it's um, it's ended uh, without any tragedy, but something like that could easily end in tragedy too. So um, well, I think we're pretty lucky. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.